But kirtan without mridanga is like trying to dance with one foot in the mud and the other foot trying to get out of the mud. <laughs> Jai Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hare Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hare Gopi Janavalabha Giri Paratamha Hira Gopi Janavalabha Giri Paratamha Hira Sura Nandana Bhaja Jana Hanjana Sura Nandana Bhaja Jana Hanjana Jamun Tira Havana Chahadiha Verses 9 through 13 is today. Okay. Okay. Hare Krishna. One time, devotee came with a garland for Prabhupada, and he's standing there, and Prabhupada's waiting for him to put the garland on. So he's like not moving, and Prabhupada's wondering what's he going to do next, you know. 
And he stood there, just standing like this with the garland. <laughs> and Prabhupada said, put it on. <laughs> this is the old days in Krishna consciousness. <laughs> he was, I guess he was just humble, you know. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Canto 8, Chapter 2 so this is a series of verses together, 9 through 13, and there is no purport for this one. And the next one is 14 through 19, and it does have a small purport. Okay, let's see. Tasya Dronyam Bhagavato Varunasya Mahatmanaha Udyanam Ritumam Nama Akridam Surayoshitam Yasya Dronyam Bhagavato Varunasya Mahatmanaha Uryanam Ritumam Nama Akridam Surayoshitam Tasya Dronyam Bhagavato Varunasya Mahatmanaha Uryanam Ritumam Nama Akridam Surayoshitam Tasya, of that mountain, Trikuta, Dronyam, in the valley, Bhagavata, of the great personality, Varunasya, the demigod Varuna, Maha Atmanaha, who is a great devotee of the Lord, Udyanam, a garden, Ritumat, Ritumat, Nama, of the name, Akridam, a place of sporting pastimes, Surya Yoshitam, of the damsels of the demigods, 
Sarvata, Sarvata. Everywhere. everywhere, Alankritam, Alankritam. Beautifully, decorated. beautifully decorated, Divyai, Divyai. Pertaining, to the pertaining to the demigods, Nitya, Nitya. Always. always, Pushpa, Pushpa. Pushpa. of flowers, of flowers. Fala. Fala, and fruits, and fruits. Drumai. Drumai, by trees, Mandarai, Mandara, Parijatai, Parijata, Cha, also, Patala, Patala, Ashoka, Ashoka, Champai, Champakai, Champaka, Kutai, Kuta fruits. Pivalai, Pivalai fruits, Panasai, Panasa fruits, Amrai, mangoes. Mm. Okay, Amritakai, sour fruits, called Amrataka, Api, also. Kramukai, Kramuka, fruits. Narakelai, coconut trees. Cha, and Karjurai, dates, date trees. Bijapurakai, pomegranates. Madukai, Maduka, fruits. Salatalai, palm fruits, cha, and tamalai, tamala fruit, trees, tamala trees, asana, asana trees, arjunai, arjuna trees, arista, arista fruits, udambara, big, Udambar trees, big Udambar trees. Plaksai, Plaksa trees. Watai, Banyan trees. Kimsuka, red flowers with no scent. Chandakai, sandalwood trees. Pichumardai. Pichumarda flowers, Kovidarai, Kovidara fruits, Saralai, Sarala trees, Suradarubi, Suradaru trees, Daksha, Draksha, grapes, Iksu, sugarcane, Ramba, bananas, jambu bai, jambu b, jambu b, jambu fruits, badari, badari fruits, aksa, aksa fruits, abaya, abai fruits, amalai, amalaki, a sour fruit. Mm. Nice. Class before breakfast, huh? So, okay. Translation: In the valley of Trikuta Mountain, there was a golden, there was a garden called Rituma. This garden belonged to the great devotee Varuna and was a sporting place for the damsels of the demigods. Flowers and fruits grew there in all seasons. Among them, there were mandaras. Parijatas, Patakala, Patalas, Asokas, Champukas, Chutas, Pilasyas, Panasas, Mangos, Amritakas, Kamukas, Coconut Trees, Date Trees, and Pomegranates. There are Madukas, Palm Trees, Tamalas, Asanas, Arjunas, Aristas, Undambaras, Palaksas, Banyan Trees, Kimsukas, and Sandalwood Trees. There were also Pichumardas. Kovidara, Saralas, sa Suradaras, grapes, sugarcane, bananas, jumbos, 
Badadis, Aksas, Abayas, and Amalakis. Okay, what would you like for breakfast today? Okay. A little bit of everything? Okay, we'll be back. We're going to Trikuta Mountain. Omagyan timirandas yad kena jana salakaya chaksu unmilitam yena tasmai shri gurudeva maha shri chaitanya manobis tam stapti tam yena bhutale swayam rupa kadam mayam dadanti swam padanti kam mom vishnu padaya krishna prasthaya bhutale shri makti bhakti vedanta swami tinamine namaste saraswati devi gauravani pachadine Nirvasesa Sunyavadi Pasyatya De Satarine Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sivasudi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So this is a very elaborate well somewhat elaborate description of some of the trees and some of the fruits available on those trees. And it's all part of the heavenly realm in the area known as Trikuta Mountain in a garden called Ritumat. Mm -hmm. So Bhagavatam uh, has given us a little insight of where is the higher realms of existence and some of the simple nature, natural opulences that come by way of nature. Fruits, flowers, trees. And we might say that this is the opulence provided by the Supreme Lord. And today's opulence that was, goes on is opulence such as nice cars and big, you know, beds and various types of mechanical and electronical gadgets are not really opulence. And they're simply products of taking the earth and tearing it apart and creating all these uh, things in order to create a capitalistic system of exploitation. That's all it is. Real opulence is this, <laughs> beautiful gardens and of course beautiful people in the gardens, many beautiful trees, flowers and uh, various types of varieties. And uh, so you get a little insight of what is beyond the realm of this existence. And so in certain parts of this world, you can also find such luxurious places, like if you go to Hawaii. <laughs> when Srila Prabhupada said, Prabhupada always say there's no happiness in the material world. But he did say one time, if there's any happiness in the material world, it's in Hawaii. <laughs> so... <laughs> If you've been to Hawaii, you know. And it's quite, you know, lavish, luxurious, by nature's arrangement. Beautiful beaches with mountains around it. And so many, you know, five islands are there and so much, you know, beautiful scenery and nice trees, fruits. It has a little bit of a, you know, the element of a heavenly planet arrangement, comparatively speaking, to the rest of the material. And there's other places too, in certain areas. But the thing is, why is all this being mentioned? Of course, it's to mention in a term of describing what they've seen for this particular pastime. But another thing should be noted is that uh, Prabodhananda Saraswati he talks, <clears throat> and he's talking from the position of a pure devotee who has fixed his mind and heart fully on the lotus feet of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And uh, he, you know, he says, I'm not sure of the exact verse, Kaivalya Naraka Tedam. Kaivalya Naraka Tedam. Akash, that's the one, Akash Pushpayate. Akash Pushpayate, Akash means sky, and Pushpayate and it refers to flowers. Flowers that grow in the sky. So how many of you go picking flowers from the sky? Not too many. But what it's saying is that he's saying that, you know, this liberation from material existence and the so-called happiness as described in the heavenly planets is simply one 
is poison, that's the liberation, and the Akash Pushpayate, what is that? That is simply phantasmagoria. It has no meaning for a devotee. <clears throat> Devotees are not interested in these things. Although Bhagavatam describes them in detail, and also describes some of the activities that go on in the heavenly planets. But Krishna says in, Bra in the, in the, in the uh, Bhagavad Gita, Abrahma Bhuvana Loka Purna Vitya Arjuna, Mamu Peta Purna Janman, na, Purna Janman na Vidyate, from the highest, or, yeah, from the highest planet in the material world, all from the material planets, down to the lowest, all are places of death, where in repeated, all the places of misery, or repeated birth and death, take place. <clears throat> So one who is, has knowledge about devotional service and is engaged in devotional service, they don't aspire for any better realms. Even with this, in this realm, sometimes we see we may try to make some better arrangements for the way we live. We should live in such a way that we can execute our devotional service without any unnecessary arrangements. But beyond that, what's needed, what's needed <clears throat> the whole world is always pushing for better material arrangements as the way to find happiness. And that goes on in the name of progress in today's world. More things to buy, more, more activities to perform. And the world becomes so complicated and it gets farther and farther away from the actual goal of life which is to go back home, back to Godhead, or develop one's love for Krishna. And so some of these descriptions in the Bhagavatam are help us to understand that although it's very nice, it's insignificant in terms of what it can offer compared to going back home, back to Godhead. And even if one goes to the heavenly planet, Shinya, Purnya, Marta, Vishanti, that means you have to fall down again and come back to the lower realms again to take up a more arduous form of material existence or a more difficult one. And there's another danger about the heavenly planets and that is it intoxicates one to think that everything is nice. <laughs> everything is nice. Just like sometimes we also might also feel when things are going nice, we start to feel, oh, this place is not so bad. <laughs> <laughs> but then we forget, you know, that Janma Mitra Jara Valley Dukkha Doshana Udarshana. It's just filled with various types of suffering. And no one can stay here anyway. And the heavenly realms are the same thing. <clears throat> so uh, one should not be enamored by these, what we say, descriptions that, are, that give a very well, we heavenly description of higher realms with so much opulence. I mean, you go through, and especially you go through the third canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, the 15th chapter, you find, you know, <coughs> you know, there is a, they have big mango trees, huge mango trees, and there's, the mangoes are so big that they fall off the tree and they create a river of mango juice, and then the river is dried by the sun and then after it's dried, the demigods come and they make their belts from this dried river out of this dried mango juice, and it looks like gold. <laughs> yeah, so this is the heavenly planet. You all ready? <laughs> but then we, uh, we see, we understand that devotional service, or the goal of devotional services, is way beyond any kind of uh, description in terms of the uh, fulfillment that one can find. In other words, one finds complete fulfillment when one becomes Krishna conscious. But in the material world, every nice arrangement is always fraught with some difficulty. Even if, you don't, if the difficulties are not immediate, the other difficulty is that it ends. It ends. And the psychological nature of the human being is that something is going on nicely and you're enjoying it, you don't want it to end. There's some kind of, there's that psychology that, you know, we want happiness always. 
<clears throat> we, we settle for something less, but that's not our real desire. We always want, we want happiness 24-7. <laughs> that's our nature, to be happy always. <clears throat> but this world doesn't provide, nor if it does give something, it's always, it always leaves in a very quick amount of time. It's like sex life. People make a big thing out of it. They build it all up. <clears throat> You know, people get dressed up, they go to nightclubs, they eat nice foods, you know, they, they uh, you know, kind of like makes themselves look very attractive and so many things, songs and so many, and it's this is all built up and then everything is excited and then after it's all over, well, what happened, you know? Where did it go? <laughs> and when it came and went so fast. It's like a flash, you know, it's like this big, huge amount of glorious, you know, songs and poetry and, and the whole world is all that. And then the whole thing is a big disappointment anyway. <laughs> so that's the material world. And then there's so many problems after that anyway. <laughs> so this is the material world. So you... You can't stay here and you, I mean, you, yeah, you can't stay here and you can't be happy while you're here. So that's just the way it is. And that's Krishna's mercy. And there's a statement that's made by Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur. And he's paraphrasing some statement from another place, which I'm not sure of the source, where he says, he's actually quoting Lord Sri Krishna himself. And Krishna's saying, well, <clears throat> If you're suffering here, you should know it's my fault. I did it. <laughs> if you want to blame somebody for suffering, it's because it's Krishna. Because <laughs> he, he plans this whole thing through his different energies. His energies are working simply to fulfill his desire. And his desire for the material world is that no one can be happy here and no one can stay here. <laughs> and that's just the way it is. <clears throat> and so you might think, well, heavenly planets, it's a little more happiness. <clears throat> and you can stay there a little bit longer, too, because, you know, the duration of time, comparatively speaking, or relatively speaking. But then again, you have to leave that realm and come back again and struggle. And sometimes you go lower than what you were before. So, and of course, those in the heaven, look at Indra. Indra's always having problems. <laughs> the guy's always getting in trouble, right? He tries to guard the heavenly planets and the universal affairs. He does his best and he gets in trouble. He kills a demon who is a brahmana. And then he has to live inside of a lotus, you know, a lotus stem for one year, but without without any food practically. <laughs> or you know, he's cursed, and, you know, he cursed you know, to have vaginas all over his body, and then they turned into eyes because he was after it was Ahalya. He took the form of uh, the, the husband of Ahalya just to, uh, you know, entice her. And then he got cursed by her husband afterwards. And so he had to live, you know, he was embarrassed. And then, you know, he, he fell and he fell out of the heavenly planets and became a pig. And then while he was there, and you know, Nahusha took, a, took his wife and, you know, so he had more, <laughs> so you, you know, the heavenly planet is not like it's free from all the, you know, the intrigue of, that we have here in this, it's just so it's, there's always problem. Wherever there is sense gratification, there's always difficulties. That's just the way it is. So, but we get a little ind indication of something that is beyond what is going here. So the desire, the idea here is to understand that that uh, devotional service is not about going to a better material situation. There are devotees who take up devotional service for better material situations. That's one of the reasons why people come to devotional service, to improve their material situations. And Prabhupada, in a, in a very alarming statement, which was quoted a couple times by Prabhupada, he said, many of my disciples will reach Swargaloka. In other words, they won't go all the way back home they'll stop because, you know, 
they perform some devotional service, but they still remain attached to material happiness. So material happiness is an idea. There's no, when it's described by Bhakti Vinod Thakur, I think it's Bhakti Vinod Thakur, maybe it's Bhakti Siddhanta, who describes that material happiness is just one step up from material suffering. And he describes it's another type of suffering, that's all. <clears throat> so when you look at it, just like Prabhupada was saying, Prabhupada was giving a nice discourse on the mode of goodness, and devotees were talking. So Prabhupada is describing the mode of goodness. And then Prabhupada is saying, well, I, you know, there's no happiness here. <clears throat> and Prabhupada is actually really going, really, like, he's describing how miserable the material world is. You know, if you listen to Prabhupada's lectures, you should, every day. He just talks about, you know, how <coughs> miserable this place is and how people who live here are trying to make it more miserable for you. They're called the scientists. <laughs> uh, and he goes on and on, and then some devotee, you know, it's a discussion, it's kind of like a morning walk. And then finally one devotee said, but Prabhupada, you know, the mode of goodness, it says in, in the Shastras that the mode of goodness gives happiness. Prabhupada said, well, yes, but it also says that the mode of goodness means knowledge, and that knowledge means there's no happiness here. <laughs> So that was the end of that discussion. <laughs> so that, you know, so this is, so one who's in knowledge, and this is very important because as Prabhupada mentions, and mentions it many times, before you can actually ma make advancement in devotional service, you have to be convinced there's no happiness here. If you're still trying for material happiness, you won't make hardly any advancement. You may be protected from the suffering of material energy, but spiritual advancement will be very, very slow, practically nil. If you're still thinking there's something in this world that is nice and I need it, it will make me happy, <laughs> whatever it is. <clears throat> Therefore, a devotee knows that uh, one has to be simply depend on Krishna for everything, that's all. Jai si pancha tattva ki jai. So full dependence on Krishna will fulfill all desires you need. Not that we become dependent on Krishna to get material desires, but Krishna will take care of the devotee completely and perfectly. The devotee has nothing to worry. Prabhupada talks about that. He says, you know, just like, and he uses examples, of course, it's simply an example. It's like when you, <coughs> say, join a particular maybe a, the service, you know, the army or the navy, marines or air force or whatever, <coughs> special forces. It doesn't, you know, in other words, you join a particular organization and you're working completely for that organization. Then the organization will provide everything you need. They take care of you, you give 100%. So in the same way, when we come to Krishna conscious, Krishna will take care of you completely, perfectly, at all times. There's nothing, as long as we don't look towards material world for some kind of satisfaction. You remember that song, I can't get no satisfaction? And I try, and I try, and then they really say, I can't get, no! Satisfaction. And just to make a point, you, you see the the symbol. That was the what was the not, what was the name of that group? I forgot. The Rolling, Stone. Rolling Stones. Yeah, and then they have their symbol with the tongue. You've seen that. I mean, they took that from us. And really, they said the tongue is the most voracious and difficult to control. So they used that symbol as a way for their you know their logo, I guess. <laughs> part of their logo. And so, you know, the, one of the, the Rolling Stones was quite nice. He, he actually wanted to meet one of our senior devotees and spend some time. They liked the devotees. And a lot of the rock and roll bands also, you know, some the Grateful Dead, there was also those. So they have a little bit of sense, but of course they're attached to their <laughs> sense gratification. So it's just some sentiment. 
But we can learn <clears throat> from others who have tried, because this, this, this is the psychology. Nobody has been happy here, but I got the plan. I'll do it. I can be happy here. I'm a little different. You know, I figured it out. And I've been studying those who failed, and I see where they failed, and I can see where they could have been successful, but they didn't do it. But watch me, and I'll do it. Yes, success is just down the road. <laughs> also down the road is the, uh, you know, the funeral home also. Like that. One of our senior devotees, he was, <clears throat> he was on his way to a funeral parlor, and he, uh, he's driving, he's using his GPS to get there, you know. And he's driving along, so he has to go to somebody's wake, you know. So, you know, the GPS is, you know, taking him. And finally he arrives, and the GPS says, you have arrived at your final destination. <laughs> And then he thought, oh my God, <laughs> so, <laughs> maybe we could get rid of this GPS. <laughs> so this is the final destination of this body. <laughs> so why try to decorate it and make it so nice while it's going to go anyway? <laughs> it's just a waste of time. <laughs> because you could spend that, that same time, energy, intelligence, and whatever else you have uh, to become Krishna conscious. That's the most important thing. And whatever you may gain in Krishna consciousness, this is the important thing, is you never lose it. If you become 50% Krishna conscious in this life, of course we recommend, and Prabhupada does also, he recommends that we finish completely, but if you don't make it, suchinam simbitam gehe yoga prasta padayata, you get a good birth in your next life, and by the arrangement of material energy, by the Lord's will, through the arrangement of the material energy, you will come in contact with devotees again and pick up where you left off. And that might even be true for some of us here today. We have performed devotional service in our previous life. Now we're continuing in this particular life. So yeah, it's never lost. We're in material life. There's a beautiful verse of in the first canto, maybe Maharaj knows this verse. One, one, two, one, five, seventeen. You remember that verse, where Prabhupada talked about Sadharma. Yeah, go ahead. Amosa Kim. Mm -hmm. Remember the translation? <laughs> it's the. the yeah, so no matter what you do in material life, there's no gain to it. But even if you take the Krishna consciousness and you're serious, and for some r reason, the verse doesn't really give us any reason, but just maybe out of, you know, whatever, you fall down, there's no loss. So in the material world, there's no gain, but spiritual life, there's always gain on any level of practice of Krishna consciousness. But we want to go back home, we want to go back to God. Or at least, at least we want to qualify ourselves by becoming free from all material desires and fixed in devotional service. That is our nature. That is our nature. And so there are so many other opportunities to get deviated from that. This is the descriptions of the heavenly planets. Sort of can be in a f form of allurement to, in other words, to, to aspire for a better material. But again, it's all part of the material world. And Krishna makes this point over and over. He doesn't say it once, he says it twice, at least. He says the same point twice in the Bhagavad Gita. This place is miserable. <clears throat> Dukalayam, Asasratam, Anitya Asubam. He says them in two different places. 
This place is temporary and it is miserable. But we don't believe Krishna because, you know, he, he's got his program and he thinks that he's cheating, we're getting cheated by his program. So we gotta make our own program. <laughs> We'll, we'll find some happiness somewhere. Okay, Maharaj, I understand. <clears throat> now I understand the class better. I'll be happy for a little while, but then if I die, that's okay. But at least I'll be happy for a little while. That's not so bad. Well, good luck. <laughs> we wish you well. <laughs> Just like uh, I received a letter from a disciple. This is unfortunate. I'm very unhappy about this. And this letter was, um, I'm going to stop Krishna consciousness for a while. And I have, I want to put it on hold and got other things to do right now. And uh, I'll be back. <coughs> mm, not necessarily you'll be back. You don't have to say whether you'll be back or not. <laughs> so you might, so this is the way sometimes we think that, that we have to fulfill our material plans and then we can become Krishna conscious. Prabhupada tells the story of uh, of Kailash. Kailash, this is an interesting story. Uh, Kailash was a very you know distinguished gentleman. He had a nice business and he had a family, young family and by his good fortune he met with Narada Muni and Narada Muni was you know, encouraging him to take up Krishna consciousness in a very, you know, full, direct way. And he said, no, well, Narada Muni, I understand what you're saying and I also agree with you, but I have my family and I have my business. You know, when the family grows up, they can take over the business and then I'll be free. Okay, so Narada leaves. So after some time, Narada comes back, comes to see Kailash again. He, he again asks Kailas, you know, you know, I can see the children are growing up. They're taking care of the business now. Are you ready? Well, Narada, you know, now they have their grandchildren. They don't really know how. I'm their grandfather. I have to help them, you know, teach them how to take care of their children. And, you know, this is my duty as their grandfather. And so Narada leaves thinking, oh, well, all right. So after some time, Narada happens to be in the area again, so he comes back, he sees Kailash, goes to see Kailash again, and then uh, he's there, and he's looking around, and the, the, the children are there, the grandchildren are there, and he's asking, well, where's Kailash? And uh, they said, well, oh, our grandfather, he died. <laughs> and so Narada thought, oh, lost another one. So now he's walking out, he's walking across the lawn in the big, big estate that Kailash was. And then he, he, as he's going out, he hears, hey, psst, psst, over here, Narda. And he looks, he sees a dog, the dog starts speaking. It's me, Kailash, I became a dog. Narda says, are you ready now? Well, you know, I'm the watchdog and I have to guard the estate. I can't go. <laughs> so Narda, thinks, Narda leaves and he goes, all right. So he leaves again. After some time, Nar Prabhupada tells this story. After some time, he comes back and then he goes into the house. He, first he's looking outside and he sees he can't find that dog anymore. And uh, he's looking around. So he goes into the house and he asks the family, what happened to that dog you had out there? Oh, him? Oh, he died. So then Nara leaves again, and he's, when he's walking out, he hears, Psst, over here, Narda. Narda doesn't see anything. Over here in the bushes, what's that? Oh, a snake. It's me, Kailash, I became a snake. Narda says, are you ready now? Well, the dog died, and somebody has to guard the house. So Narda thinks, all right, I have to do something. So he goes into the house, and he says to the family members, there's a snake in your yard. Oh, really? They come out with sticks and they start beating their grandfather. <laughs> and then, then Narda says, are you ready now, Kailash? Yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> so I told that story in a group of, you know, big group of Indian people. 
And at the end, one man came up to me, he had a long face, he looked really miserable. And he looked at me and he said, my name's Kailash. <laughs> you know what I said? I said, well, I think this story was for you. <laughs> I, I wouldn't give him any mercy. <laughs> so this is material life, you know. There's always some plan you haven't done yet and you just got to do that and it just keeps going on. Maya just keeps giving you another plan and another plan. And Krishna's, you know, Krishna's there, I'll, I'll get to him someday. <laughs> but it doesn't work like that. Now therefore, in devotional service is always in need of the time, and it can't wait. And therefore one should see that whatever it is there in this material world is simply the arrangement of the Lord so we can use for devotional service. But enjoyment is on the spiritual platform. There's no enjoyment in the material world. It's simply an idea. Okay, so we'll stop here and see if there's any questions or comments. Adi? Mm -hmm. Hare Krishna. Thank you for this story about Kailash. Yeah, you can find it in Prabhupada's lectures, he tells it. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, so this shows how there are uh, always some material plans to live in this world. At the same time, I, I know uh, devotees who were so frustrated that they either left uh, this world or <coughs> were eager to leave this, wo this world. And also many non-devotees are very eager to die. Fresh, frus frustrated by living in this world? Yeah. Uh, one reason or another. Mm -hmm. So it seems they do not have any any material plans. So it seems that l looks like a good desire that they just want to li leave uh, this world. Yeah, well, y if you t if you go to jail, it doesn't mean you you know you're free from the tendency to commit crimes. So if you die, you still have those desires that you know are part of your existence in the material world. So that means you take another situation again mm -hmm. to come back and fulfill those desires. Better to stay with the present situation and become Krishna conscious. Trust no future, no matter how ever bright it may be. And yeah, that frustration, I mean, to a small degree, is an impetus for Krishna consciousness. But when it gets too big, then it becomes uh, you know, a mood of, you know, sadness, anxiety, frustration. And that's not favorable for devotional service. So we, you know, we also feel like that sometimes, but then again, just stay in Krishna consciousness and depend on Krishna, that's all. Yeah, being in the material world is a miserable place. Even for devotees, they think, oh, you know, it's just so miserable here. But stay in Krishna consciousness and gradually try to serve the Lord and try to develop that happiness that comes from Krishna consciousness. There's no solution in that this frustration of uh, you know trying to get out of it. You know, there's people who commit suicide. I mean, we've had devotees in our society who also committed suicide. And recently, not recently, yeah, almost less than a year ago, someone in New Vrindavan committed suicide. You were there during that time, were you? <coughs> Just before then you were there. Huh? Yeah, that was a very, very unexpected thing. You know, also one devotee from Croatia who was living in Maryland, in, in uh, the Maryland temple in Baltimore. Yeah, so many people you know, feel like, well, you know, this, I can't become Krishna. And, and Arjun says to Krishna, what is the destination of a man who, you know, doesn't, he can't become fully Krishna consciousness and he's given up the material world. Does he perish like a riven cloud? And then Krishna then speaks, you know, that actually, you know, suchi nam simitam gehe, takes a good person a better situation. 
So do your best. <laughs> stay in the, you know, stay in association with devotees. That's maybe that's one of the reasons why people are not feeling, you know, enthusiastic is that they leave the association of devotees. And then the material world becomes even more miserable. At least in the associated devotees, generally, we generally care about each other, so we devotees can help other devotees to go through whatever difficulties they're having, like that. But ending one's life is not any solution. <laughs> There's no solution like that. You can die to the things that are of material attachments, but the physical body is meant, you know, Lord Chaitanya chastised, <laughs> you know, Sanatana Goswami. Sanatana Goswami's body was, you know, uh, full of, you know, sores, and Lord Chaitanya was embracing him every day, and those sores were touching the body of Lord Chaitanya. Sanatana Goswami was just like, oh my God, this is so bad. And you learn Lord Chaitanya is strong. When he grabs a grab, you, you can't get away, you know. So Sanatana Goswami thought, let me just take, get rid of this body. So he decided, and then Lord Chaitanya said, hey, I got plans for you. Your body. It's not your body, it's my body. You're going to destroy my property. You're a thief. <laughs> he called him a thief. He said, my body, your body is, I have plans for that. It spread Krishna consciousness. Yeah. So... And that principle is there for all of us, that this body doesn't belong to us. And there's also verses in the third canto that describe, the body doesn't belong to you. You might think it's your body, but where did you get it? <laughs> Who gave it to you? And how is it being used? <laughs> it's another illusion that we think this is my body. It's like an apartment, you just, you're renting it, that's all. You're not the owner, you're just the, you know, you're, you're just the tenant, that's all. The body doesn't belong to us. Sorry about if I over-answered that question. <laughs> okay, so we'll stop here. Thank you very much. Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai. Jai.